Guys, I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 4. We are been in a series this whole year entitled The Chain Breaker. And we have been talking about breakthrough. We've been talking about what God can do in your life. And I want to continue uh, that thought at least this week and next week. And uh, Proverbs chapter 23 verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 4 verse 23. Uh, Solomon says, above all else, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. From your mouth, excuse me, keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. I don't know if you know what he's doing right now, but he's teaching you how to guard your heart. Hello? He's teaching you how to guard your heart. Straight ahead, fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Okay, I've talked about the sound of breakthrough. I've talked about breakthrough. I've talked about the place of breakthrough. I've talked about a lot lot of different ones. Here's my one today. The soil of breakthrough. The soil of breakthrough. Of breakthrough. Speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus shares a parable. He shares this parable about a farmer who sows seed. And some seed falls on rocky ground, some seed falls on hard ground, some seed falls on thorny ground that is covered in different weeds and thorns, and then some seed falls on good ground. And he shares this parable, and after the parable, the disciples pull him aside, and they go, Jesus, fantastic parable, fantastic. One of your best. Really incredible. Aren't you? Thank you, guys. Thank you. And then, and then one of them kind of gets a little bit bold and goes, but, but Lord, uh, what did it mean? <laughs> they had no idea. Here is the response of the Lord to that question. Mark 4, 13. Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? Jesus, watch this, boils down his entire teaching ministry to one parable. That if you miss Mark 4, you miss the kingdom. If you miss the parable of the sower and the soil, you will not understand what God is doing, how God does it, what God is saying, and how God speaks it, that if I don't understand that parable, I will not understand the kingdom of God. Jesus describes God like a farmer as a sower who sows seed. And Jesus would go on to tell us in Mark 4, the sower sows the word. That what God primarily does in your life is he speaks. More than he does, he speaks. And what we do with his word will directly impact our future. So he said some fell on rocky soil, hard soil, soil filled with weeds, but, but then some fell on good soil. And that, that's what we're after. We're after the good soil because that soil produced in them 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, now here's what I want you to catch. The seed was good in every soil. So it wasn't a matter of seed. It was a matter of soil. It wasn't that the seed was bad, the seed was ineffective, the seed lost its power, the seed was impotent. The, the, the scripture says that the seed was good, but the soil determined what the word, the seed, could do in their life. That it was the soil of my heart that determines 
what the seed can do. So, so what is the soil of my life? Where does the word of God work in my life? Watch this. The work of the word of God begins in the heart. So what is the soil? It's my heart. Okay, not this ticker right here, but, but my heart. The, the heart in the Bible is your inner life. Let, let me say it like this. The heart is the real you. Now, when we think of heart, what do we think of? We think of emotions. Man, I'm just all heart, man. But, but that's not actually true because the book of Proverbs is a book all about wisdom. And the proverb writer writes about the heart 91 times. Because the heart is not just emotion or feeling or passion. The heart literally means the seedbed of my emotions, of my decision making, and of my worldview. See, though I can fake it for a moment, eventually my life will flow and my life will go in the direction of my heart. Huh. My life is flowing and my life is going in the direction of my heart. That word heart means the center or the middle of the man. The seat or the throne of your spiritual life. It's the place, one theologian said it like this, where your soul and your spirit meet. So my life reflects my heart. I'm talking about the soil of breakthrough. I know where I'm going. I'm not lost. Watch again Proverbs 4.23. Everything you do flow, flows from it. Everything you do flows from your heart. This means that I do not see things as they are. I see things as I am. You don't see people as they are. You see people as you are. This is, this is freaky to think about, but right now you're hearing me through your heart. You're, maybe you're new. You're, you're trying to figure me out right now through your heart. Maybe you've been coming to this church for a couple of years and you're trying to decide, is this still the church for me? You're trying to figure that out through your heart. You're, you do not see things as they are. You see things as you are. So I must protect my heart, steward my heart. I love this. I just heard this, and I love this. Tune my heart. Tune my heart. Because Isaiah 16, Isaiah says that my heart is like a stringed instrument. And I, I saw my friend... Pastor Stephen Furtick talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and I texted him on Sunday night, and I said, I'm watching you preach, and I'm going to steal your illustration. <laughs> and he wrote right back, and he said, I knew you would. <laughs> and I said, you know me well, because we're both, we're both musicians. Can I unplug this, or is it going to pop? Can I unplug this real quick? Can I? Thank you, brother. God bless you. It's already... Nope, it's not unplugged. So, so my heart... Is like a stringed instrument. Okay. Now, here's what's amazing about this. You do not tune this once and set it and forget it. If, if you watch next week during worship, you'll notice that the guitar players will tune not just once. They'll tune multiple times even during a song. Because this will go out of tune. In the desert, we have to put these in cases and then put humidifiers over them or they'll crack. And my heart, Isaiah said, is like a string instrument, which means it needs to be tuned and tweaked and cared for and protected. I have a very expensive guitar at home, but it never sits out. It always sits in its case. Because if I leave that guitar out, it will crack. Because the conditions out here are negative. So I have to guard it. 
I'm talking about the soil of breakthrough. Jeremiah went on to say in Jeremiah 31 that our life, that our heart, that our soul is like a garden. If you've ever seen a beautiful yard or a beautiful garden, it didn't just happen. Someone's working that thing. Someone's keeping the bugs out. Come on, somebody. Someone's picking the weeds. Someone's watering it. The things that we see that are beautiful, the things that we hear that are beautiful must be tuned, tweaked, and worked and protected. I'm talking about breakthrough. See, because it doesn't matter what God ever does in your life. Whatever he does without the right soil, let me say it like this, it can only last as long as the soil is healthy. Now, Jesus said that in Mark 4. He literally said that. He said that some uh, seed will fall on hard ground. It will immediately spring up. But because the ground was hard, they could not dig down roots. Okay. So if we're going to have the soil of breakthrough, number one, I have to fight. Fight for your heart. Fight for your heart. Are we doing okay? Fight for your heart. How did the scripture start? Guard your heart. Can I say it like this? Why would the writer say that? Because your heart is under attack. What if you just settled that I'm here for 50 years, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years, 200 years, however long you think you're going to live, for as long as I'm here, I'm in a fight, and I'm just going to settle that And I'm going to stop being discouraged by that or angry by that or exhausted by that. I'm just, I'm settling in my life that as long as I'm here, my heart, my center, my throne, my seedbed of emotions is under attack. So I must guard and protect my heart. Now don't be discouraged by that because we protect and we guard everything that's valuable. You know what I did last night, right before I went to bed? I got my wife a big Stanley cup of water. Come on, somebody, because I'm a (laughs) good husband. Can anyone guess what I did next? Every man in the room? I checked every door. Opened the garage door. Made sure it was shut. Shut the garage door. Locked. Checked the back door. Checked the front door. Checked everything. Because I, I guard and I protect what is valuable to me. We lock up our house. We lock up our car. Right? You were walking away from your car to walk in here at church. (laughs) Beep, beep. And then you went, one more, beep, beep. Okay. (laughs) And then just one more time, hey, brother, beep, beep. (laughs) Because we guard. I I don't know about you, but I got me a little, I got me a little protector, a little, uh, a little code on my phone. I don't want y'all in my phone. <laughs> we set the alarm. We, many of us in Nevada, we practice the Second Amendment. Amen. We, we guard. All right, easy. We guard. <laughs> Just figured out where a lot of you vote and don't vote. <laughs> some of you clapped and some of you. Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean to divide. 2024. Praise the Lord. I, I, I. I guard what I love and I guard what's valuable and the proverb writer says you got to guard your heart because it is the most valuable thing you have. So there's an enemy that wants my heart and I must guard my heart. I got to guard my heart from discouragement. Got to guard my heart from discouragement. Look at these that I put here on the screen for you. Do not fear or lose heart. Lose heart. It it is so easy to lose heart. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart. Do not lose heart. I, I have to fight discouragement. Because once you're discouraged, you're open. 
Once you're discouraged, you are desperate for encouragement. And if you're not careful, you will find it in illegitimate sources. I have to guard my heart from, so I have to stay encouraged. I have to guard my heart from fear. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. Do not fear does not mean that I don't feel fear. It means that I'm not led by fear. Do not fear does not mean I'm a faith robot that never has emotions and I just trust God at all times. I am blessed, praise God, blessed and highly favored, hallelujah. That is not faith and that is not real and, and, it's, and it's not biblical. Do not fear means I feel it, I just don't let it make the decision. I'm guarding my heart against fear. I'm guarding my heart against deception. Jesus did not say, I'm a truth. You know, I'm really in my truth right now. Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> I'm going to do my truth. You do your truth. All truths will be true. If all truths are true, then nothing's true. Jesus is the truth. Now, you either, you either accept that or not. But, but that right there will decide how many open doors the enemy has to your thought life. Jesus is not a truth, and he wasn't his own form of truth. He is the truth. This is what we believe as Christians, sorry. If you want to see the opposite of that, just look at our culture. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to guard my heart against deception. I have to keep going back to what, what does Jesus say? I got to guard my heart against greed. The greedy stir up conflict. There is always conflict with greed. Why? Because you never have enough. Huh. There's always conflict with greed. If, if you find that money is always connected to conflict in your life, there's a greed issue. I never make decisions based off of money. It's easy for you to say, no, it's not. But those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Which means that greed cannot lead to real prosperity. Ooh, got quiet. Moving on. I gotta, I gotta guard my heart against condemnation. There is no condemnation. Condemnation, the guilty sentence written against you. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Period. Period. That's it. Which means that I will disappoint myself I will be weaker than I thought I would be. I will fall for temptation. I will make mistakes. But I am still a child of God. And I'm still worthy of love. What a weird statement. I'm worthy of love. That, every woman said amen. Not one man said amen. <laughs> because no man would even. Yeah, you are, sir. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of love. No condemnation. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for my heart. Two, I'm focusing my heart. Number two, focus your heart. Okay, Jabin, I want to guard my heart. How do I do it? Well, Proverbs 4 tells you how to do it. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to work on your eyes, your mouth, your thoughts, and your feet. My life is being impacted, watch this on the screen, by what I look at. That's my focus. What I say, my self-control, what I think about, my priorities and who I walk with, my relationships. I can tell you the health of your heart based off of those four things. So what do you look at? 
He said, keep your eyes from perversion. What do you look at most? It's called the eye gate. It's called the eyes, Jesus said, are the window to your soul. What are you allowing in? From a window you look out and from a window people can look in. From my eyes, I give access and from my eyes, I gain access. What are you looking at? If you want to guard your heart, you got to check your focus. If you want to guard your heart, you have to check what you say. My self-control. What is your default language? It's a picture of your heart. And I can change my heart by changing my words. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What I think about, my priorities. What do you feed on? What's your go-to soul diet? What's your go-to soul diet, and is it feeding you? Or is it malnourishing you? Is it helping you or hurting you? The, the music you listen to, the radio you listen to, the podcasts you listen to, the, the voices you allow in. I know I screamed and shouted last week, and I know I'm a lot calmer this week, and a lot of you like screaming and shouting, Jabin, but I didn't have a voice till Thursday, so everybody relax. <laughs> what I think about... <laughs> Me and JR walked in the office Monday. What's up? What's up? We, neither of us had a voice. What I think about my priorities. Because see, as powerful as last week the sound of breakthrough is, it can only last as long as my soil. So, so what am I thinking about? What are my priorities? What am I feeding on? Are you in the word of God? Are you feeding on the word? Are you, are you in worship? Are you... What are you feeding on? That's your priorities. What are your priorities? You gotta figure that out because it's a reflection of your heart. Here's another one. Who I walk with, my relationships. You cannot grow in the wrong environment. A six-inch shark in an aquarium could be an eight-foot shark in an ocean. What's your environment? Who are you hanging with? Are they tearing you down? Are they lifting you up? Are you encouraging them? Are they discouraging you? Are they making you feel less than? Are, are you under control by people? You've got to get out of it. Are you being manipulated by people? You've got to get out of it. Be, be very careful because I, I cannot grow into the life God has for me in the wrong ecosystem. Whew. Luke 6, 45. Let me wrap up everything I just said with a verse. Luke 6, 45. A good man. Okay, time out right there. I'd like to be that. Anybody interested so far? It's, right. it's kind of like when it says, blessed is the man, right? It's like, oh, I'm interested. A good man. Oh, I'd like to be a good man. So how do I become a good man? Brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings forth evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. See, nothing in my life, nothing in my spiritual life happens as fast as I think. I got my word and everything's going to change today. Nope. Watch the, watch the terminology. Stored up. Takes time. You build your house on the rock so that when the waves crash and the storms blow, your house does not fall. It takes time. You gotta, you gotta build this thing. When the prosperity comes, and if, if you don't want that money to become a God and that, that, that prosperity to become a God, you better be built on the rock. You gotta store up. The good man is good because of the good things he stored up in his life. A bad person is bad because of the bad they've stored up in their life. 
So I've, I've, I've got to focus more on what I'm feeding and ingesting and taking in than I need to focus on what I'm producing. Because all production comes from the heart. Well, I'm going to make more money, and I'm going to be a nicer person, and I'm going to be a better husband, and I'm going to be a better dad, and I'm going to be a better woman, and I'm going to do it, and you can do it, and you're amazing. And, uh, and this is why all New Year's resolutions by, yep, by mid-Feb are gone. We're done. <laughs> Some of you wanted to lose 30 pounds this year. You only got 35 to go. Amen. Some of you are going to be a better husband this year. You're still sleeping on the couch. What's up? Because that's not it. Because you're trying to produce something that your heart is not healthy enough to produce. Because it is the health of my heart. Out of my heart flows. And we are trying to produce healthy lives with weak and unhealthy hearts. So I've got to feed on the good that stores up over time. Find somebody who looks really healthy today out in the courtyard and go, so how'd you get that body? You know what they're not going to tell you? They're not going to tell you. Yeah, so last night I started eating salads. I woke up yesterday morning and I was 400 pounds, but I ate a salad last night. Look at this six pack. I... No, it's going to store up. I was eating ground beef and broccoli last night. God is my witness. And I looked at my wife and I said, I hate this. <laughs> With a spoon, like a Neanderthal. Because <laughs> did you forget how to use it? I don't know, I'm just mad. <laughs> and after I ate my ground beef and broccoli, I looked in the mirror, right? Did it? No, nope, didn't work, no. Because it takes time. We prayed in church and we thought our marriage was going to get better. It's going to take time. I prayed for my kids. I came down to the altar last week. They're still not saying, it's going to take time. I thought I was going to get a breakthrough by Wednesday. It's going to take time. Stored up. Stored up. Okay, lastly, lastly. This is... This is the key to heart health. Here we go. You got to forgive from your heart. I'm going to have the team come or the key. Let me just have the keys because I I said I got to end quick and I don't want to, if we start singing, it's over. (laughs) Forgive from your heart. If there is one issue that you must guard against, it is unforgiveness and offense. To forgive is to let go for the sake of your own future. Say that one more time. To forgive is to let go. Literally what it means. Forgiveness literally means to let go of something. To let go for the sake of my own future. Let me me remind you of Proverbs 4.25. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. I cannot look ahead and hold on to the past at the same time. Jabin, if I forget, I'm I'm letting them off the hook. No, you're not. You're letting them go. Because judgment belongs to the Lord anyway. Justice belongs to the Lord anyway. Wrath belongs to the Lord anyway. God's going to do whatever he's going to do with them anyway. You're You're not letting them off the hook. You're letting them go. For my future, because I have to look ahead. My eyes have to stay here. My gaze has to look before me. And if I'm going to have a guarded heart, I'm going to have to have a future focus. But I cannot focus on the future holding on to the pain of my past. See to it, Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. Can I fall short of the grace of God? I guess so. And that no, this is how you do it, that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. 
defile many, defile many. Catch that phrase, defile many. The deception of bitterness is that I can be mad at one person. The deception of bitterness is that I can hate one person. The deception of offense is that I can be offended at one person. It does not defile one, it defiles many. Because it's a root system. It becomes my roots. Bitterness is a root. It will spring up at times. But watch. Deeper than that, it's a root. It's a way of living. It's a lens. And what Jesus told us in Mark 4 is that those bitter roots, they will choke God's word. Matthew 24 Verse 10, and then many will be offended. And once you're offended, what do you do? And will betray one another. And what will happen after that? And you will hate one another. Because everything grows. And then what happens? And then many false prophets, voices will surround you to affirm your dysfunction will rise up. Because the devil, once he has the foothold, he'll now bring voices. Wolves in sheep's clothing. So they look spiritual and they look like believers and they all oh, brother, blah, blah, and all they're doing is feeding. And then, and then what, what happens from offense? Offense eventually leads to, at the very end, deceive many, deception. I cannot be offended and not be deceived. I would like to be offended and hate that person, but still be in truth. Impossible. This word, offense, is an interesting little Greek word, scandal on. It, and, and here's what it means, a baited trap. We've all seen the mouse trap with a little bit of cheese at the end. It's baited. Everybody say, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. <laughs> a baited trap, a baited trap. So they offend you. And it feels like if I reach for the bait, I will have justice. But it doesn't harm them, it harms me. Offense keeps me trapped in a moment, in a memory, in an emotion, and in a season of trauma. Because I'm trying to hold on for the sake of justice. But I will eventually have to let go and let God if I ever want to be free. And I am guarding my heart because my future and my family and my legacy is way more important to me than what they did to me. Because what they did was terrible, but what God has for me is powerful. I need every person who believes you have an amazing future. Stand up on your feet. Come on, I want you to give God some awesome praise today. If you believe that nothing they did to you is greater than what God has for you, so I'm letting go, and I'm letting God. Because forgiveness 
does not change my past. Woo! But it changes my future. Guard your heart. Again, I want to go back to that word. I'm going to pray for you. Everybody's standing. I want to pray for you. I want you to put both hands just kind of over the middle of your chest right here. The, the scripture said that heart is, is the center of the man. Lord, I would ask you to guard our hearts, but you told us this is our job. So with our hands over our chest, over our physical heart, we commit to you that we will guard our heart with all diligence because we know that out of our heart flows everything. Forgive us where we've opened doors. Give us the courage to shut doors. And Holy Spirit, empower us to guard our hearts. We commit our eyes, our mouth, our thoughts, and our feet back to you. And we forgive anyone who has offended us because the destiny you put on us is too great to live with that root of bitterness. We, we unpluck that from our heart right now. We pull it up by the roots and we receive your freedom and your healing. Pray.